you, family. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode on our channel. I'm Maddie, and this is Kiki, and we are Canada's favorite female grill experts who are here to show you how to make anything and everything on the grill. Okay, so you guys might be wondering, where the heck are you two? This isn't the grill studio, this isn't Maddie's kitchen. Today, we are in my kitchen. Finally, we're in Kiki's kitchen. This is exciting. And we're making something today that Kiki could actually eat. Yes. yes. Okay, I am so excited, guys. We're making a smoked creamy carrot soup on the kettle. It is freezing outside. This soup is just a ticket. Warming in the tummy, nice oh. and delicious. <laughs> this kind of... Oh. Okay, why must everything that we do come with the dance? It's got to come with the dance. It's got to come with the song, apparently. <laughs> this is going to be so good. And we know that this is something that you're going to want to be serving at all your holiday parties this year, even though we all know they're going to be smaller. I love a soup appetizer at a dinner party. It seems like super fancy. It comes out. It's got its own little underplate for some reason. I know. What is with the underplate? When you're eating soup at home, it never has an underplate. No, or like 20 different spoon options. There's only ever one. I know. Dinner parties are definitely something of the past. You don't really hear about people hosting really, really fancy dinner parties no. with like eight courses. It's more like cash these days. That is so true. That just seems like something that people used to do in the past. And it got me thinking, if you could go back to a decade for any reason at all, which decade would you choose and why, honey? Go. Good question, man. Great question. I love this question because who hasn't thought about time traveling oh. before? I know that we have. Marty McFly. Yup, yup. <laughs> okay, so I would have to pick, I would go back to the 50s slash 60s. What? Where are the Mad Men fans out there? Where are the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel fans okay, out there? Okay, yeah. Okay, I would have to say the reason why is because I feel like back then, people used to put more pride into their appearance. So I don't know when looking like a slob at Walmart became trendy and became the norm. Yeah. But men used to wear nice hats. Women used to wear hats. I, I love a nice hat on a man or a woman. People just put more pride into their appearance. That's what I miss about the 50s and 60s. Also, the cocktails. Okay, who doesn't love a gimlet? I love a gimlet. It's all about the vintage somewhere. Now, honey, I know what you mean. I don't know when the slob look became trendy. I know. Like, people looking like they just rolled out of bed. Put some pride into your appearance, everybody. Looking good makes you feel good. Guys, Maddie will not even take out the garbage if she's not wearing makeup. No, so I feel I like... Honey just walked right out of the 50s and 60s. Okay, honey, which decade are you traveling back to? And then, barbecue family, we want to know which decade you would travel back to. So let us know in the comments below. This is a fun question. We can all weigh in on it because everyone wants to go back in time. Totally. And I definitely want to get out of 2020. Yeah, especially, <laughs> I'm just going to say, especially in 2020. Goodbye, 2020. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, I would like to go back to 1980. Ooh, Taking okay. it back to the 80s. You gotta say why. Okay, there's a multitude of reasons. Because A, I want my want one of those windbreakers that's like, you know, it's kind of like, this color was big in the 80s. Body break style? Yes. The windbreaker? Okay, and I feel like my hair would go very well in like one of those like flock of seagulls haircuts. <gasps> Hanging okay. out at the arcades, like doing fun stuff from oh the my 80s. God, the, the arcades. Yeah, I definitely would love to go back to the 80s. That is my choice. All right, that little bit of time travel was fun, but the fact of the matter is, we're still in 2020, <laughs> and we can make this year better by smoking up some creamy carrot soup, guys. I guess if we're gonna be stuck in 2020, we're still gonna have fun making this soup today. Buckle up, everybody, and get ready. This is gonna be a tasty one that Kiki can try too. Yeah, she can. All right, so you know the charcoal is ready to be dumped. When it starts to look ashed over like that, we're gonna give it a shake. And then in one fluid motion, we're dumping right into the charcoal baskets because you guys know we're charcoal basket girls. And today we're cooking over indirect heat. So now we're just gonna even out the charcoal in the charcoal baskets and move the charcoal baskets each to one side of the grill. We're gonna get the grate on and get the lid down so the grill can preheat 10 to 12 minutes like we always say. 
All right, we're gonna level with you guys. Even great barbecue experts sometimes forget to add wood when you're dumping the charcoal. So these little handy hinges right here make it so even if you forget, you can still put wood into the grill because this soup is smoked. So we don't want to miss out on the delicious flavor that this apple wood adds to the soup. To start this creamy carrot soup, we like to roast our vegetables in a grill pan first. And we have some butter flavored coconut oil here. This is plant-based and this is kind of like our secret ingredient to all of our plant-based recipes. All we're gonna do is add our vegetables to the pan starting with chopped potato, a lot of garlic. You'll notice we're adding so much garlic to this soup because that's what's gonna give us an incredible flavor. Carrot, because after all this is a carrot soup. Chopped celery and onion. And then all we're gonna do is add in some dried thyme, salt and pepper to taste, and a little splash of olive oil. And like we always say guys, we like getting right in there with our hands to make sure that everything is thoroughly mixed before this hits the grill. So our grill is set to around 450. It's the perfect temperature to roast these delicious vegetables that we have here. And you guys might be wondering, why are you guys roasting them in a shallow pan like this? And so whenever we're roasting our vegetables on the grill, we always like to roast them in a shallow pan so that the smoke can entirely coat them. And there's lots of surface area so that all that wood flavor permeates into the vegetables. So we're just gonna take the lid off Put the vegetables right into the center of the grill. So that's what indirect cooking is. The heat source is there, the heat source is there. Our beautiful wood is really, really nice and fragrant there. And then all we do is put the lid on and these are gonna do their own thing. We're gonna check back on these in about 20 minutes to see where they're at, see if they're tender, and see if they're ready to hit our soup pot so we can get all the other <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that we can get all the other delicious ingredients into our soup. It's cold out here, Kiki's <laughs> laughing, let's go back I'm in, I'm freezing. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, everybody. We it's ran out here. Cold. We ran out here without our coats on and now I'm freezing. <laughs> we were grilling, guys, it's a trade-off. Sometimes you're like, do I put the coat back on? Do I just run out? And whenever you just run out, you're like, why am I just running out? I need my coat. Let's get back in. <laughs> Our vegetables have been smoking for about an hour. Now let's see how these look. Ooh, Ooh those look good. They look perfect. Now let's bring them inside to continue building our soup before I freeze my buns <laughs> off. <laughs> All right, guys, check this out. The applewood really did a number on these delicious vegetables. They look tender, they look succulent already, and now all we have left to do is finish building our soup. So we're gonna dump these into our pot. Make sure you get every last bit of delicious juices there. And then we're gonna put in some of our vegetable stock here. So like we said earlier, this is a plant-based recipe. So if you didn't wanna make this plant-based, feel free to use your favorite stock recipe. And then we have some miso in here for that delicious umami flavor, as well as soy sauce. Again, for more delicious umami flavor and for its saltiness. Some bay leaves, and now we're adding our coconut milk. For a touch of cheesy flavor, we're gonna add nutritional yeast. Now we're just gonna stir this all up and put it back onto the stove so everything can boil and come together. So then all we have left to do is just blend it up with our immersion blender. All right, before we blend this soup up, guys, this is a very important tip. You wanna make sure to remove the bay leaves, otherwise you're gonna get bits of bay leaves that never really break down into a soup. And the reason why we're saying this is because we've done it and it's <laughs> disgusting. So make sure to get those out. There's the other one. That looks so good, loving the color. You don't have to wonder if there's carrots in here because it is bright orange, 
I am so excited about tasting this. For once, I get to eat the food. Guys, I get to make Kiki a bite this time. This okay. feels nice. This what is? Okay, but I also get a bite. So that's your spoon to make me a bite. Okay, fine. You really caught me off guard there. All right, what is the song gonna be? You get to choose a song. Give me a bite and give me a good song. It's December. I don't know about you guys, but we sure have been loving the Christmas tune so far. So this is gonna be a Christmas song. What is it? Okay, ready? Yeah, I'm scared. Ready? I'm scared. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I to do I've got to go away. Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a good feeder. You're the worst. Like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna work. You're the worst feeder ever. I can tell that was not real. Right. You were like cho choking it down you're my like head. You climbed off of your teeth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't even get to enjoy that because someone. Okay, let's make you a better bite. Can I make my own bite, no, please? No. One more chance. <laughs> You're spilling it on me. Wake it up. <laughs> okay, ready? Mm. That is so good. Very cheesy from the nutritional Ooh. yeast. You've got that salty bite from the miso and the soy. Perfectly mm. balanced. Just a little bit smoky. Not very much in the smoke. Yep, okay, get in there. <laughs> swallowing and hot soup and, and then, laughing. I yeah. don't think that's good for digestion. It's, bu it's bubbling back up into my esophagus. Okay. Okay, let's not have that. Here we go. Okay. okay, I'm not gonna do a song. Hey, don't Here we go. On me. Here oh, we oh. go. <laughs> How good is that? Ooh, salted to absolute perfection. You got your nice saltiness from the miso, but there's a different kind of saltiness from the soy sauce. Yes. Very complex. Yes, and you really won't miss actual butter or actual cream because we've used the butter flavor coconut oil yeah. and the coconut milk. And the potato actually makes it very, very rich. Very so the velvety. The natural starches from the potato makes it so creamy, so velvety. Mm. It's absolutely delicious. Is that coming at me or you? <laughs> you're like, I'm gonna brace myself. You're like, yeah, oh my I'm ready for it. The old ticker can't take anymore. <laughs> Okay, no, it's going for me. No, that soup is fantastic. No, it's going for you. <laughs> <laughs> Does taste so good. No, you know what? Mm -hmm. This week, mm -hmm. I'm taking your part. I get to eat the food. Guys, stay with me on this one. It tastes so good. I don't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel like dancing. 